Today, the title of the message I want to speak is called I Spy. Now, if you're not from Ireland, maybe you don't know this, but as children growing up here, we used to play a little game. Then I played it with my children. I now play it with my grandchildren. It's called I Spy with my little... I. Something beginning with... T. T. Tom! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> However, I want to look at spies in the Bible, but if you think of a spy, when I hear the word spy, and I love spy movies and spy box sets, but you know, they're nearly always like guys in Berlin smoking at a cafe. <laughs> and their eyes get slitty, and they're drinking black coffee, and they're looking around to see if there's someone from the other side there. And when I think of spies, I think CIA, MI5, MI6, KGB, all of that stuff. Did you know in Ireland we've got a secret service, a spy agency, and it doesn't even have a name. No, that's a good spy agency. I mean it. Nobody knows the name. We know nothing about it. We don't even know where it is. But every year, if you follow the money, a whole load of money goes into Ireland's secret service. So what they get up to, I have no idea. But when we look at spies in the Bible, we're not looking at good spy, bad spy. A better description is undercover special operatives, like you get in the army. In, our, in the Irish army, there's a unit called the Irish Rangers. In the UK, they have the SAS. I think they're called SEALs or something in America. Every nation has them, and they will go across the battle line into enemy territory, and they will see what the territory is like. And I want to look at that today, because the spies in the Bible are more like those special operatives. So I want to just look briefly at the journey the people of God took, because it's your journey, and it's my journey. And we know they left slavery in Egypt, wandered in the desert or wilderness, and then came to the borders of the promised land. For us today, symbolically, Egypt is your old life. It's the old you. For the 20 or so people getting baptized, today is a day where you mark the difference publicly, but the difference has already begun in your heart. So we have left Egypt. Will anyone say hallelujah? Hallelujah. We've left Egypt. We were slaves back there, but we've left it. Some of us here today maybe are still in a bit of a wilderness. We're wandering. We're not sure. You go through the desert. That's when you're searching. And then to go to the promised land, Israel, Canaan, that's the new life. That's the life of the believer. Now, what would a sermon be like if there wasn't a good old map in it? You have to have a map in every service. So as you know, when Doris usually speaks, she sings. Michael quotes C.S. Lewis. You see? Yeah. And he's a great writer, Irish writer. But I love an old map. And here's a map of what I'm going to look at today. Isn't it lovely colours? Red and green should never be seen together. Anyway, so what we've got is the children of Israel. That's you and me, the people of God. They've left Egypt. They've gone through the wandering desert. And they now have come to the entrance of God's new life for them. His promise, you're right, my love. So here they are. This is the red arrow here. They're coming to the River Jordan. And the first big obstacle they're going to face is Jericho. And today, this is the modern uh, nation of Jordan, the West Bank of Palestine and Israel. That's what we're looking at. And Jericho is a city that was rebuilt. It's there today. So as you can see, there's a river there. So we're just on the cusp of the people of God taking a big step. All of you getting baptized, they are going through the waters because they got ready, God separated the waters for them to take the land. But before they did that, the leader, his name was Joshua, it's a type of Jesus. In Hebrew, Jesus is known as Yeshua, similar to Joshua. But he sent out two undercover guys, spies, to see 
what was the land like, what was the opposition like before the guys would come in. So they planned it. And those two guys came back and they said in Joshua 2.24, two spies came back to Joshua saying, truly the Lord has given us all the land. And the local fighters there are terrified of us. So the people living there had already heard that God was for these people. Mm. Where you work, mm. where you study, where you live, when people begin to hear you are following God Almighty, the one who was and is and is to come, you carry a wonderful atmosphere with you. Who'll say amen? amen? Amen. You carry a wonderful atmosphere with you. And those who are opposed to the Lord will be wary of you because they see in you what they know they don't have in themselves. Mm. That's what was going on back then. And so they give this report to Joshua. And fast forwarding, he gets everyone ready. There were about two million people. And they cross over. God separates the waters. They come to the first obstacle, the city of Jericho. What's your Jericho? Because mm. you've got a Jericho. I've got a Jericho. This is the big obstacle. I want you to keep that in your mind. And they cross over, and God says, I want all the people. There's a lot of people. Just keep walking around the city six days in silence. So the people in the city are bricking it. They are panicking. The people in Jericho don't know what's going on. But silently they walk around the city six days. And then we're told, on the seventh day, the trumpets were blown. And the people all gave a great whisper, no, a great shout of praise together. Then the walls of Jericho fell down. And the people of God captured the city. Now, I don't have a trumpet on me. Anyone got a trumpet? <laughs> no. What they had back then was, you can see it here on the screen if you're listening on podcast, maybe check it out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. It, they call it a trumpet, but the Jewish name for this instrument was shofar. Say shofar. shofar. And it's like this big long thing that you blew into, and it made a loud sound. No, they had a whole army of men with these trumpets. It must have been earth shattering. So we're gonna try and do a little bit of noise. Here we've got Steve and Jerry on drums, and we're gonna make a bit of noise. Let's just get a little idea of what it might sound like. If you're afraid of loud noises, just put your fingers in your ears for a second. <laughs> One, two, three. Now imagine. You're at sleep at home, and it's so quiet. And suddenly you hear... Do you think you'd stay asleep? I would really. No, we wouldn't. So they hear this loud noise, but it was followed immediately by a whole load of people, nearly two million, who shouted out a word. And the word they shouted out is a very hard word to pronounce. It is hallelujah. It's very hard, isn't it? Hallelujah. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the guys to do that really loud sound. And then together we are going to shout out hallelujah. Are you up for that? Yes. Now we did this at the 10 o'clock service and I have never heard such a sound. I mean that. The guys shouted out at the top of their voices. But now the world is watching us. So we've got to be louder. Are you up for it? Yes. Now the best way you can make a noise is if you stand. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. No one's judging you. But if you're in for it, would you stand up? And at the count of three, we're going to do a real big hallelujah. So the guys are going to play the sound. It's mimicking trumpets as best we can. And then we're going to shout out hallelujah. Okay? Yes. Are you alright? Yes. Oh, are you frightened? Oh. Come on, let's do it, okay? Steve, one, two, three. We want to make the Bible alive. What did it 
feel like? What did it sound like? Mm. Next time I'll be preaching on this, I'm going to hire a couple of fellas from, I don't know, New York or Jerusalem and come over with their trumpets. So the walls come down. Think of your Jericho. Mm. All of you getting baptized, think of your Jericho. Mm. That problem. And the walls came down. You see, I think Joshua must have had a deja vu moment. What do I mean by that? He was remembering Joshua the human being. What was it like 40 years earlier? Because 40 years earlier, Joshua was in exactly the same situation, but it had a totally different outcome. Because Joshua had been chosen as one of 12 spies 40 years earlier when the children of Israel had got to the River Jordan. Except they had a very different experience. And this is from Numbers 13. And may the Holy Spirit move over every beating heart in this hall. And may your word pierce our hearts. Amen. And bring life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are told in Numbers 13, Moses sent 12 men. See, Moses was the leader then. And he was very politically correct, so he wanted to represent everyone. So in effect, he sent a committee. And you know what? Committees don't really work. Not like that. But he sent 12 men to the promised land to spy out the situation, saying, see if the land is rich or poor, if the people are weak or strong. After 40 days there, those spies returned and reported to Moses and all the people. So two million people are gathered, waiting to hear this report. And so the spies say this, that land is indeed a land flowing with milk and honey, as well as having abundant fruit. These were a desert people. They had come from Egypt, which is basically desert, rather than they have the River Nile. They had spent time in the desert, so to them it was overwhelming that you had rain, that you had green grass, milk, honey, fruit. So they come back and they say, yeah, this is a fantastic future. But, but the people who live there are strong like giants. And their cities are fortified and very large. Now you and I have just read together how 40 years later, the people of God had faith. And the, the people who were like giants were terrified. And the strong fortified city, the walls had fallen down. But here and now, 40 years earlier, and Joshua must have been remembering, they gave a very different report. You see, the people weren't like giants. They were just a couple of inches taller, a couple of centimeters taller. There was no big deal about it. But to them, it was huge. And then... Of the 12 spies, we're told in the next verse 30, one of them called Caleb. However, Caleb, one of those spies, tried to calm the people. And he said, let's go up at once and take possession of this land. We are well able to overcome it. You are well able to overcome Amen. your Jericho. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. The world will tell you again and again, you're not able. But if God is for you, who can be against you? Mm. I'm not saying we overcome every issue if it's God's will for us to overcome it. Mm. And God had clearly said to them, I want to give this to you. In fact, the next chapter puts a bit more meat in the bones. 14 verse 6 to 8. It says, two of the 12 spies, Joshua, who we just saw earlier, and Caleb said... This land we spied out is a good land. And if the Lord delights in us, he will give it to us. Mm. Only do not rebel against the Lord. Mm. Sometimes, if, we, if you and I allow our fear to take over, it actually is sin. Mm. It's not just that we're afraid. It's rebellion against <clears throat> God. If God has clearly said something and we're afraid... Let me give you an example. Today we've got 20 or so people getting baptized. Why? Because God has clearly said it in the Bible. But we can be afraid of doing that. Don't be afraid. Have faith. Mm. Life is so short. So short. Are you really going to spend your life looking over the shoulder of what some other fellow thinks? How about Michael shared it at the Happus Nine meeting this morning? We serve an audience of one. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
So they said, God will give it to us. Don't rebel against him. But what did the others say? The other ten spies said, no, we are not able. Mm. So they are confessing defeat out of their mouth. They, the enemy, are stronger than us. They will devour us. And some of us are here and they are people at work. They are teachers at school. They are people in the family. They, they. How about him? Mm. How about him? What does he say? Who cares what they might do? If God is for you, who Amen. can be against you? Amen. You see, the Bible, some people say, oh, the Bible is only an old dusty book. The Bible is full of wisdom. Mm. and encouragement that has mm. been there for thousands of years. And we've got a couple of people who over the last hundred years says, oh, God is dead, baby. Uh, yeah, really? Yeah? A no. hundred years they're saying that, and you can go back thousands of years, and generation after generation have come to know who the real God is. Hallelujah. Amen. God's not dead. He's alive. Amen. Amen. Look at what their own confession says about themselves. Here's what they said. Here are the ten spies. We believe. It's like a confession of faith. We were like little grasshoppers compared to them. Compared to them. There was a great book written years ago called Your God is Too Small. Some of us carry around an image of God and he's a tiny little thing. I promise you, my God is not small. I hope yeah, your God yeah. won't be small. Because my God is all-powerful, almighty, yes. and well able to overcome. Yes. So we believe we were like little grasshoppers compared to them. And what did all the people listening on? They all wept, the whole congregation, two million. Mm. And they said, let's go back to Egypt. Mm. Here's the thing. The children of Israel were emotionally threadbare. They were, if you will, traumatized, like some of us are here today. So they had escaped a genocide. Some of us here today, 20 years ago, escaped a genocide in Rwanda. But you're here in your life today, hallelujah. Amen. So they knew what genocide was like. They escaped persecution and discrimination. Some people have come here from countries where they are discriminated against. They faced war. 20 years ago, we had a lot of people from Congo. You're still here, praise God. You escaped war there. We have some people here who've come from Ukraine only a year or two ago, and they've escaped war. The thing is, whether someone you love has died, a relationship broke up, you're struggling with your health, you can't find a place to live, when all of these things happen, brothers, sisters, we are vulnerable. We are emotionally at a low ebb. Who are you and who am I listening to when we are emotionally vulnerable? Because they were listening to people who did not do them good. Look at the, look at the fruit. They wept. I've known people in my life and my family's life. When they speak, people weep. But it's not weep, weeping from life. It's weeping with despair. People are narcissists, some people. They are so self-serving. They will suck the life out of you. They're only about themselves. And they will try and knock you down to build themselves up. I can honestly say, and I say it with respect, but it is the truth. My own dad was a bit like that. He would knock everyone down to build himself up. It was awful to see. I saw him do it to my mother again and again. She was an educated, lovely lady, but he consistently knocked her down and ridiculed her in front of other people, and it broke our hearts as kids. And he would take her down because he was so insecure himself. And the only way he would feel accepted is if everyone else around him was down. And I clashed with him big time because I wasn't going to let anyone take me down. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> but my mum wasn't that strong. So I know what this is from my own family. But she listened to him. And I remember her weeping again and again. And I've met people who weep here. And honestly, in your heart, and I've been there once or twice myself, you feel like giving up. Yeah. It's like I'm just going to go back to the old way of living. 
They said, let's go back to Egypt. Why? Because they forgot about the slave masters. They forgot about the lash of the whip. They forgot about the guys who were killing their babies. They forgot about the life they had where they had no choice. But the people who take life from you will speak at your vulnerable moment and speak words that drag you down and not lift you up. Surround yourself with people who will build you up. Who will say amen? Amen. I'm not saying blast anyone out of it. You don't have to say anything. You just have to make a decision in your heart. When they come at you, just pray silently. In one ear, out the other ear. Amen? But when someone is speaking with a good heart, especially a believer, we take what they say into heart. I love what Professor Leslie Allen from Fuller University says about this verse. He says, the evil report prevailed. It won out. Ten fearful man, men can outshout and certainly outscare two brave men. I can remember Michael and myself. Honestly, I feel like we were like Joshua and Caleb. That sounds a proud thing, but I really do. I remember again and again in this city, 40 years ago, 35 years ago, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, trying to plead with people. We can build a church where the worship is contemporary, where we're not stuck in dead tradition. And again and again, people said, no. You can't have a church like you have a vision for. That will never take off in Cork. Oh no, you can't do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we can. Amen. You are evidence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and the model of church was so conservative and lacking of life. And those churches are closing down. Mm. Brothers and sisters, sometimes you've got to be a minority mm. and feel okay with it. Yeah. Amen. If God is for you, Amen. who can be against you? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. They outshouted, but they believed. So Joshua survived 40 years. I feel so sorry for Joshua and Caleb. Because of the other guy's fear and their loyalty, they end up 40 years going around in circles in the desert. Everyone was afraid. No, we can't. No, we can't. God said yes, but they said no. And Joshua and Caleb had to endure that until the whole generation who had no faith died off. But the next generation, though, they were a generation of faith. See the next generation here dancing earlier? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When I was 19, and a whole lot of other 19-year-olds became Christians with me here in Cork, I remember we would dance before the Lord. Mm. And when I see every couple of years young people dancing before God, which is what David did, yes. David danced before the Lord. Mm. And when I see people dancing before the Lord, I say a silent prayer. I was looking at all the guys there, Nick, Josh, who else do we have? Uh, Megan, and uh, I saw Anthea, and, and a whole lot of others, uh, Freya. And I say a silent prayer, I say, when you're in your 60s like Amen. me, may you still be dancing before yeah. you. Amen. 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 It's part of the vision for church. We encourage deliberately. I might be like a fool walking up and down here. I don't care. We want to have a culture and a permission where we can celebrate before God. I put it further. If our young people can't dance in church, where are they going to dance? Because yeah. they're going to end up in a club somewhere. And I tell you something, God won't be glorified in that club. But him here, he's be glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So even if you're a very quiet person and you don't want to do anything like that, that's okay. But don't be against anyone who does. Amen? Amen. Support them. Praise yeah. God. <laughs> don't be like the ten fearful men. You see, it's all about, is someone in your life encouraging you or discouraging you? To encourage is where you give someone courage, literally. Discourage is where you take it away. I had a teacher in school who said to me, you are useless at maths. And it kind of was, really, you know. But he shouldn't have said that. 
thing is, I thought I was good at everything else, so I, I was fine at everything else. But his words kind of kept ringing in my ear. What a terrible thing for a teacher to say. So I got him. He became actually, I, I won't say, I won't say, I won't say. <laughs> Be careful of your words. Parents, life and death are in the power of your tongue, my tongue. Life and death. We can destroy our children or we can build them up. We can destroy our husbands and wives or we can build them up. We can destroy our friends or we can build them up. Choose. Which do you want to do? It doesn't mean that we can't have heavy conversations or something has gone wrong that we're like Egypts, we're afraid to say it, and of course we do. But overall, we built one another up. Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, let's live in a community where people are encouraged and not discouraged. Amen. I'd go further. Stop the grasshopper mindset. Amen. They are so cool and I'm not cool. They are so educated and intelligent and I'm not. They are so beautiful faces and I don't have a beautiful face. I couldn't tell you about that, but anyway, that's what some people said. They, those girls have the right figure and some girl thinks she hasn't got the right figure. They've got connections, I don't have connections. They're great at sport, I'm not great at sport. I could go on and on. They have children, I don't have children. He has hair, and I don't have hair! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> 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 you gonna just move from there now to there? <laughs> that church is getting very flesh-like in these days. <laughs> Here it is. Your life is determined by what you believe. Mm. Let's take something as silly as being bald. I could, I don't know, have a hang up about it. I could go around with, my father had a comb over it. Do you remember then? He would comb his hair over his hair. <laughs> you never knew he was bald. He just had to cut it off, you know? <laughs> when I started going bald in my mid twenties, I remember I would wear a hat. And this pastor saw me, I was at a conference, and he just took off my hat and he said, you're losing it, lad, own it. <laughs> <laughs> I rebuked him, I rebuked him. <laughs> it's all to do with our attitude. Mm. You see, I might be bald and you might have a full head of hair, but you, what's your issue? Because we've all got issues. Yes. Don't we? Yes. The thing is, do we trust God? Do we see life as he sees it? Mm. Because honestly, God doesn't care whether I'm bald or not, but he does care who I am. Mm. Yeah. It's the person inside that matters. Yes. Now, I can be in the world out there, and the world out there says, you can't be bald. I'm just using that as an example. Who cares what they think? Care what God thinks. Yeah. Let's be yeah. part of a community where we're not that shallow. Yeah. Mm. Does that mean we can't look well? And wash regularly? Of course it doesn't. We believe in deodorant. It's the 11 commandments. <laughs> but there's a grasshopper mindset where we think others are stronger than us. I'll always remember I was Christian about three years. And this honestly happened. I remember going into a situation. It was here in Cork. I won't say what it was. But I felt insecure going in because I felt the other people there were way better than I was. But I also remember making a decision, and I was a young Christian. It was 1983. And I remember saying, I will not allow that emotion to rule my thinking. Mm. And I said a prayer. Do you know what I prayed? And I pray it regularly. Get behind me, Satan. Mm. This is not who I am. Mm. I'm not going to take on that baggage. Mm. And you know, I could have spent the last 41 years carrying that baggage. I choose life, not death. Amen. I choose what God said, not what man says. Mm. How about you? So you and I are strong in lots of areas, but there's probably areas in our lives where we're not strong. Mm. And that's where the grasshopper mindset comes in. 
we're going to pray against that. Do you know why? Because we've all got a different grasshopper. Maybe it's inferiority, addictions, loneliness, social anxiety, toxic relationships, overthinking, known as paranoia. Remember the great Cork phrase, paranoia will destroy you. <laughs> what is our grasshopper situation? Do you know what I'm going to do? I don't have time to call people up at the end of the sermon. Let's take a moment. Can you think of an area of your life where you go, you know, in that area, maybe it's relationships or maybe it's work or study or your health, I don't know, but in that area, I feel like a grasshopper and I know that's not what God is calling me to be. If that's anyone here, and I'd say it's probably most of us, but anyway, would you put up your hand? And I'm putting up my hand. I can think of an area in my life. How about we pray the Holy Spirit falls on you right now and God takes it. Will you stand, those who put up their hands? Just lift your hands up. Actually, would you lift your left hand up first? And I want you to put in the left hand the people in your life, maybe they're just workmates, maybe they're neighbours, whatever, who would try and tear you down. Their words will discourage you. Just put those people in your left hand. And Heavenly Father, we give you those voices that would tell us we're like a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. The voices and the people who would try and tell us we are not able. Mm -hmm. Lord, we know there's some times that we're not to take a step, but when you want us to take a step of faith, we hand these voices and their words over to you. And we say here and now, Lord, Help us not to listen to those voices. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can we put up our right hand? And I want you to put in your right hand all those people who you know will encourage you, will speak words of life and not death over you. And let's just pray now. We pray, Lord, that these people in our lives, we would listen to them. We would listen and we believe right now. We are not a grasshopper. We are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can you say amen? Amen. And so we believe we are called to greater things than the life of a grasshopper. So we will listen to good counsel. And we declare it to the Lord today and we declare it to ourselves. In Jesus' name and God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's keep our seats. Nearly there. I love this verse, Romans 3, 4. God tells the truth, even if people can be liars. Old King James Version says, Let God be true and every man a liar. I will listen to God first. If God says it in the Bible, then I want that to be part of my life, even if people say the opposite. So if people say, sleep around, baby, just any way you feel, just sleep around. And God says, no, you don't do that. I'm going to do what God says. Amen. Why? Because I protect my physical body. How many people? Do you read the rates of STIs? It is shocking. Absolutely, people are killing their bodies because they have no control, no self-control. How about emotionally? How about mentally? And above all, spiritually. When you get together with something, someone, something spiritual happens. Be careful, brothers and sisters. And choose life, not death. This world says one thing. I want to do what God says. Who will say amen? Amen. Let God be true even if every man is a liar. And it says, God is faithful, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He won't let you be tempted, me be tempted, beyond your ability. As he always, always, also gives us a way of escape that we might endure it. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, someone not in the church, remember a a guy saying, he was out of control with lust. And I remember saying to him, did you ever see God giving you a way out? No. (coughs) No. I said, I want you to think. Anyway, after a while, he, be- he began to admit there was always a way out. The thing is, he didn't want the way of escape. <laughs> we choose to escape temptation. Amen? Amen. 
And when we choose it, it's not like a sudden silver bullet and, hey, it's all gone, baby. That's not the way it happens. We endure it for a while. And then we come out the other side. Amen. Stronger and with peace and with courage. For the Amen. Amen. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But it is not impossible. Amen. It is very possible. Amen. Amen. That goes for addictions. That goes for social anxiety. The devil wants you to be out of your head with panic rather than coming to a church. And the world will say, oh yeah, you don't need to go to church. You just need to be at home on your own, minding yourself, baby. Social anxiety, bow down, worship social anxiety. You know what? Don't be like a grasshopper. Mm. Say no and say yes to God. Who'll say amen. amen? Amen. Last verse. Choose today who you will follow. Maybe you'll choose the old gods, the old ways of your ancestors. But as for me, and as for this house, we will follow the Lord. Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. I declare it. And for all those who love God and, pro and follow him, he will never let you down. Amen. He will never let you down. Amen. We might let him down. But he'll never let us do. Have faith in God. He loves you and he's for you. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.